Hello and welcome to the FBI on Sky News. Tonight, the man behind the largest acid house party ever held in this country gives us his side of the story. And now to the latest revelations following that acid house party that, as we reported last night, took the police and the people of Berkshire completely unawares. Today, in a front page splash, the Daily Mail named a 22-year-old entrepreneur as the man behind the event that reportedly attracted 11,000 youngsters to a night of music and drugs. He's Tony Colston Hayter, the wealthy son of a university lecturer and described by his father as a genius. The Saturday night Sunday morning event was filmed as part of a rock video and now exclusively we can show some scenes of what went on in that hangar at White Waltham Airfield. No doubt the music certainly got everybody's feet tapping in the studio there. Tony Colston Hater. Certainly in that video, that bit of video we saw, everybody looked as if they were having a good time. The police looked very relaxed. And yet the residents complained that they thought World War III had arrived. Certain reporters present said girls as young as 12 and 13 were rubbing shoulders with drug pushers and that people were biting the heads off pigeons. There was, uh, according to a, a Sun reporter we had here last night, silver foil from ecstasy tablets covering the floor. You were there. Can you tell me exactly what went on at that party? Well, first of all, I'd like to set the record straight. It wasn't an acid house party. It was a dance music party. This is um, a kind of name that these parties have been branded with from last year. And actually, that actual type of music isn't even played anymore. Um, as far as these um, uh, untruths are Go. It's just unbelievable some of the things that were said. First of all, the foil that was littered around the floor um, was foil that comes out of the confetti guns, which is something that, and, and it glitters through the lasers as it goes down to the floor. So, um, the, I mean, I, so this is what they thought. There's thousands of those everywhere. So, um, and as for biting heads of pigeons, I don't think, it, I mean, how did they catch the pigeons? They're just outrageous things. Mm. Um, um, absolutely no way um, was there anyone under the age of 18 in the party. This is um, stipulation when members buy their tickets. There's no way that could happen. H how do you know? Because there were 11,000 people there. I mean, you couldn't go around checking everybody, could you? Um, well, Girls of 12 nowadays well, can look jolly near 18. OK, well, all I can say is that um, a s a uh, quantity of people were rejected from the door, um, some for looking underage, even if they had tickets, if they looked underage, obviously somebody else had got a ticket for them, they were rejected. Um, obviously, we d we're, we're not short of numbers, we don't need to let in little girls, it can't, can't, can't happen. Um, who, who was behind the party? I mean, who put it on? Because you were described today as the, the acid house party Mr. Big, mm. the Mr. Fix-It. I mean, is that true? Is it, is it all well, your idea? Um, basically, um, a company called Transatlantic was behind it. Um, the company I'm a manager with, which is Worldwide Productions, were hired to actually um, produce the event and do the production there. And was there really a video being made as we, as we yeah, saw in that? Well, that's part of it. You know, yeah. there's, um, we've got eight hours of film, where, and, and that film, that, that film, which will be released in due course, shows what a nice atmosphere mm -hmm. there was, and that, that, that all these these things are just totally ridiculous that have been said. Now, what, what about the claims in the press that there was a lot of drug pushing? Uh, again, last night, a reporter here said that people were going around saying, do you want E? Is there anything we can do? Do you want some E? Mm. He did say he didn't actually see anybody taking it, but he did say that there were people asking. W were there drug pushers there, to your knowledge? Well, um, we, we had undercover security there that, that spent all night um, wandering through the crowd, and anyone they saw um, attempting to sell drugs or take drugs or whatever was rejected. At least nine people were rejected for that reason. We do everything in our power to stop this. There were signs around the wall walls it even says on the tickets um, and that this morally and legally this can't be allowed to go on and we're, we're right on top of this why 
Do you have so much secrecy surrounding the party? I mean, sort of tickets with telephone numbers and then you phone the telephone at the last number and then you've got to go to a pub and... I mean, it's like nobody's told where the location is until the very last okay. moment. This is a very why, complicated... Why, why is that? Very complicated point and hard to explain, but um, simply this. First of all, um, it's part of the excitement, it's part of it. It's a mystery trip, that's part of it. Um, secondly, unfortunately, if we release the address earlier, um, our competitors um, will do everything in their power or uh, to, to spoil the party. So it's simply by phoning the police and saying there's going to be violence and drugs and all these sort of things, um, and, it, and it, wouldn't, it wouldn't happen. In fact, surprisingly, there was only one violent incident, which perhaps is, is quite miraculous well, with all those people. there wasn't even one. Not yes. inside there wasn't. But, but I mean, that, it's an area where local residents live. I mean, suddenly they, they find these hordes of cars pounding down their, their drive, and there was rumours that one local resident was threatened by a bouncer with a knife to his throat. Why don't you tell the police? Why don't you ring up and say, look, we've got this big party. Can you just come and well, and police all, it for us. Let me just say this about um, this ridiculous, again, that was in the Sun newspaper, and I mean, oh, people don't even, I mean, anyone who believes that is just, must be on drugs because it's outrageous, the things, I mean, the um, bouncers were shooting CS gas canisters into the crowd. Um, now, you saw the police and how happy they were on no, that they thing. Did look the, yeah, nice, there was no CS gas canisters, there was no bouncers holding knives, it was absolute rubbish. Um, the fact is, the, the music and dance licensing in this country doesn't allow for any event to go on past three o'clock. That's one of the attractions to our parties, we go on all night. We go under the private party um, section of the law where being a private party we're allowed to go on all night as a private party at your house would be allowed to go on all night. Um, Rather a lot more people than I might mm. have to my party. Yeah, it's a very large private party. So in effect you were by not telling the police trying to kind of skirt the rules and regulations. Um, no, uh, basically um, an independent fire officer checked um, the whole building, there were 100 foot wide hangar doors and fire extinguishers everywhere, emergency lighting circuit. The company, um, the company's appointed fire officer did all that. So um, basically, um, it, it would be nice that the police did actually turn up before the event, the event and um, the police were very good all night and very mm -hmm. helpful. And the rumours in the press today, you made something like £132,000, is that true? Did you? I wish I did personally, but no. What, I mean, what did you make out of it? Um, or are you me not? personally, I've got a management fee for helping on the night. Mm. Can I ask you why all these people who went to this party should sort of pound round Berkshire at the dead of night, w waiting for a sort of final location to be given them, drive to a disused hangar uh, for a party where they get a lot of uh, fizzy drinks, no alcohol, fizzy drinks, and I gather grossly inflated prices if that's true. Why don't they go down to the local disco where they live? What's, what's the attraction of going to this party that you threw? Uh, well, first of all, um, 50,000 pounds was spent on production, and as you saw from even that tiny clip of film, and there was a fantastic laser show and light show. Um, basically, it goes on for 12 hours. It goes on all night. No lo all local discos finish at 3 o'clock, which again is ridiculous. All over Europe, you can dance till 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. So that's one of the main things that we've got over the local disco. Also, it's the togetherness. It's very hard to explain, but there's a sort of unpretentious atmosphere um, at these dance parties where you've got a mixture of black and white, of uh, a total cross-section of classes and um, um, everyone's everyone all together and it, it's a kind of secret atmosphere and underground sort of community club it's very hard to explain but um, you have to really be there to understand but obviously they understand and they come and they enjoy themselves Tony uh, I know you've had a lot of hassles can I just ask you quickly if you're going to throw any more parties because you've thrown some before is that the last one you're going to throw um, that's the last one our company's going to be involved with um, as an unlicensed dance party. We're going to do a big dance music festival um, in two months' time, and that's it. Will you tell the police? The police will be there. Right. Absolutely. Tony Colson here. Thank you very much for coming in and putting your side of the